Hello folks, today I'm going to make a short video where I explain one aspect, one little aspect of the book, Poison Foods of North America, which I myself wrote. Uh, this is also one video when I'm not talking into a camera, but I'm talking into a microphone. And what you see is not my face, which I think is pretty boring, uh, but you see actual graph or a chart that is part of the book. The book has more than 400 tables and charts. And today I will cover just one chart. But before doing that, I will first explain what this book is about, who this book is for, and who this book is not for. First of all, this book is a reference book about how much glyphosate has gotten into our food. What makes this book unique is, first of all, this is an analysis of tests done by Canadian Food Inspection Agency covering more than 7,000, almost 8,000 food samples collected in Canada but originating from uh, around 68 countries of the world for one specific purpose. They were tested for finding out how much glyphosate is in them. Canada is, as far as I know, the only country <laughs> that has conducted this extensive amount of uh, tests on food for glyphosate and I had something to do with it but we will leave that aside and then uh, I might be the only one as far as I know who got hold of all this data and analyzed it so painstakingly. So this is basically what the book is about. It explains how much of glyphosate has gotten into which of the foods and produced in which parts of the world and to make that easier to understand. This has been broken down into tables and into charts, uh, graphs, which are easier uh, visually to understand. And there are more than 400 of them. Now that explains what this book has, what it is about, what it is not about. Well, this book is not about a, an argument of whether glyphosate is good to be in food or not good to be in food. This is nothing to do with the argument of what glyphosate can do or cannot do if you eat food with glyphosate in it. So basically this book is designed for those people who have already made up their mind that glyphosate is extremely dangerous. They would like to avoid it at all costs and they just need a tool to figure out how to avoid it, what to eat and what not to eat in order to avoid as much glyphosate as it is possible. This is who the book is for. However, there is uh, some chapters in the end which covers other herbicides and, and uh, pesticides in food such as atrazine or 2,4-D and so on because apart from these eight, near 8,000 sample records, uh, test records from CFIA, I also have quarter of a million records of of foods tested for other herbicides and these, those are also analyzed uh, by me and are still being analyzed. However, my main focus has been glyphosate primarily because uh, it, it, there is so much more of it in our food system than almost anything else. That is one reason. Uh, it is considered to be so dangerous. Uh, uh, that's the second reason. And it is so less investigated of how much of it has gotten into the food is the third reason. So there are indications of other uh, herbicides also uh, nearing the end part of the book and more will come. But primarily this is about glyphosate in food. So this is what this book is about. Now I will just explain one graph to complete this video uh, just as an example. And that graph is about gluten-free food. Look at it. This is the basic graph that appears in the book. Now, <clears throat> on the lower right section, it shows the source food items from which this gluten-free samples were obtained by CFIA for testing. And it includes all these things, you know, like barley products, bean products, bean flour, buckwheat products, infant cereal, chickpea products, chickpea flour, cookies, cuscus, crackers, etc. What does it mean when you say gluten-free so-and-so? That means there is an item identified as gluten-free crackers. 
So that came under the subject uh, category of crackers. And then it was also described as gluten-free crackers. So therefore, that part of it was taken out by me and clubbed into all the gluten-free foods, how, how much of glyphosate is in them. And that is why this uh, right side bottom, all these different products that had gluten-free versions of it, which were tested by CFIA, has been clubbed together. So that is the meaning of this, of this all these all these items written at the bottom right end of the uh, chart. Then you see the actual graph, and you see basically they are clubbed into two sections: North America and the rest of the world. Why so? That is because the readings of glyphosate in most ev every seed-based produ uh, product, but in this case gluten-free, is so much different in North America compared to the rest of the world that this comparative chart becomes important, at least in my mind. That is why this chart is made. Now, let's concentrate on North America first. There are two horizontal bars. One of them is green and it's written <coughs> gluten-free. And it has, see here, 881 parts per billion average reading. That means all the gluten-free uh, samples that were tested in by CFIA, if they were produced in North America and they have been clubbed together and divided by the total number, the average comes out to be 881 parts per billion or almost a thousand parts per billion. This is the amount of glyphosate on average present in all gluten-free foods produced in North America. Now look at the other horizontal graph in that uh, category, the blue one in North America. That blue one is all the foods that were not gluten-free. So that means this is a comparison between gluten-free and non-gluten-free food produced in North America with regard to glyphosate concentration. And what is the reading there? 186. So if, if somebody is specifically avoiding gluten-free food, but produced in North America, he's getting an average of 186 parts per billion glyphosate. And if one eats only gluten-free, also produced in North America, he is getting 881 parts per billion glyphosate. This means eating gluten-free foods that are produced in North America, one is getting four and a half times more glyphosate per bite than those who are uh, eating non-gluten-free conventional food. Mind it, these are all conventional, nothing to do with organics. We'll come to organics in different chart which is not covered uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this video or in this graph. These are all conventional. Now, 881 parts per billion glyphosate in gluten-free food and 186 parts per billion glyphosate in not gluten-free food among North American products. Now, how is it for the rest of the world? Here are the figures. Gluten-free, 39. Not gluten-free, 33. So, in other words, if you are not buying foods produced in North America, no matter whether you eat gluten-free or not, don't eat gluten-free, you are getting far less glyphosate than if you are taking either of those in North America. This is the first lesson. In other words, gluten-free foods produced in North America is over 22 times more toxic with glyphosate than the same gluten-free foods produced outside of North America more than 22 times more toxic in North America. So that is the comparative figures. You can see yourself. The second lesson is even for the rest of the world, gluten-free food seems to have more glyphosate in it than not gluten-free. Now there are very strong suspicions uh, and arguments that gluten intolerance itself is a symptom of gut bacteria damage induced by or triggered by glyphosate. In other words, people are gluten intolerant because they have had glyphosate before. And now, because you are intolerant, you are eating gluten-free food because you can't tolerate gluten. And if you are living in North America, you are actually accelerating your gut bacteria damage by eating gluten-free. This is the problem that you have 
if you live in North America and if you are gluten free, if you are gluten intolerant. This is the extent of the problem. Of course, you can also check the book for how are the readings for the for, for, for the organic version of it and then you'll find that they are much better uh, and, and then it's a matter of choice you have to make. You buy gluten free or you buy conventional. You buy organic or you don't buy organic. It, it's not for me to tell you. I, I'm simply giving you the information and and showing you the staggering difference in the level of glyphosate concentration in gluten-free and non-gluten-free foods among the conventional type, non-organic type, between those produced in North America and those, those produced in the rest of the world. That is just one chart out of nearly 400 that is covered in the book Poison Foods of North America. And this is also an example of how difficult it has become to tiptoe one's way through this minefield of glyphosate in our food system and how difficult the choice has become because of this runaway intrusion of glyphosate into most everything and especially those specialized foods such as gluten-free. Anyhow, I've already gone 11 minutes, so that's it. Uh, this is just one chart. And I hope it was useful for people to figure out uh, what this book is about and how it was created and how the charts were done. And there will be more where I'll uh, explain a few other uh, others of the charts. And uh, hope you all liked it. Bye from me for now.